What is coasting? Why is it a problem? How do you stop yourself from coasting? Let's have a look. So, coasting. Coasting is a gear fault and it's usually caused by people pressing their clutch far too early. And what that does, it stops the engine from controlling the car and it stops the driver from controlling the car as much. Now, you can coast in other ways. You could take it out of gear and maybe put it into neutral where it should be in a gear and letting you be in under control. But most of the time, it's pressing this clutch too early. So that's what we're going to first of all try and help with. So the first thing that we're going to do to try and help fix this coasting is talk about something called idle speed. Now, idle speed is the speed of the engine and it's the lowest speed that the engine wishes to work at. An idle speed happens when you turn the car on. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Okay. We can see the rev counter on this car sits at just below 1,000 revs. Now that's idle speed. And obviously when I squeeze the gas pedal, the engine works faster. Now, it's learning how this idle speed works while the car is moving that is your first key to fixing coasting. So we're gonna have a quick look. I'm just gonna move off. There's no one about. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the car moving slowly. I've lifted the clutch fully up now, and now I'm just gonna come off all the pedals. And the car is sitting just below 1,000 revs again, and I'm literally, that's me banging my feet on the floor. I'm doing nothing, I'm just steering. So that idle speed, and that can happen in first gear, most definitely. What I'm actually gonna do is just go, do a quick U-turn. and have a little go into second gear and see whether we can idle in second. There we go. There's me again, banging my feet on the floor. So idle speed is that lowest speed that your car wishes to work at. Now I'm gonna have to slow down because I've come to the edge of the car park. But what I'm actually gonna do is now show you what actually happens when you try and go below idle speed. Now, again, I'm just idling in first. Nothing's being pressed. What I'm actually gonna do now is I'm going to press the clutch down. The car just rolls. And because we're downhill, we're actually slightly picking up speed. Now I'm gonna lift the clutch back up again and you may have even heard it or even seen it, but it controls the car, it holds the car back a little. So, we'll go around the block again. Now I'm gonna show you what happens when we actually press the brake when we're at idle speed. There's idle speed again. I'm just gonna press the brake gently and lightly and it's getting close to a stall. And when I actually come off the brake, the car's electronics and, and engine management try and get the car off and going again. So sometimes you'll find a situation of your car surging away if you press your brake and try and slow the car down lower than idle speed. If I slow it down further than that, the car's just gonna cut out. All the clutch is, it's a link between the engine and the wheels. So if I slow down the engine now, because the clutch is up, the plates are together, all it's gonna do 
is not just stop the wheels, but it'll stop the engine. There we go, a stall. So you might be thinking, what's that got to do with pressing the clutch pedal down? Well, we've just found out that if we press the brake for too long and slow it down lower than this idle speed, the car's gonna stall. So we do need to press the clutch down, but the key is when. Now, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna accelerate the car a little bit faster, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen for the engine to slow down and get down towards idle speed, and then we're gonna press the clutch. I'm just gonna go the other way because we've got a little bit more room down to the left in the car park. I'm gonna leave it in first gear, just so hopefully people can hear what I'm trying to do. So there's the engine sound. I'm now slowing down gently with the brake and I'm listening and I'm looking at the rev counter if I need to. I'll talk about that in a second. There's idle, clutch down, and then I come to a stop. So, what I just talked about was actually looking at the rev counter and that can help you work out when to press the clutch down. But what I want you to try is to try and listen to the engine. If you listen to the engine, your eyes are then free to be looking around and making certain that you're not gonna miss anything out in front of you. But with the rev counter, when you're slowing down, like I said before, idle speed is just under 1,000 revs. And that's the same in most cars. So you should be pressing the clutch when the car gets to a speed in the gear that it's in around 1,000, just before it gets to idle speed. If you try and slow it down further than that, that's when it's gonna to push to a stall. So, I'll have another go. I'm gonna move the car off, and this time, I'm gonna go into second gear. And again, I'm gonna slow the car down, look at the rev counter, 1,000, press the clutch and then to continue my brake and bring the car to a gentle stop. So it's this process of listening to the engine and pressing the clutch down about at idle speed before the car goes rumbly that's going to enable you to not coast. I'm just going to again show you what happens when you do press the clutch pedal down a little touch too early. I'm going to show you um, actually down this slope to the right hand side. Because it's downhill, the engine isn't gonna be helping us slow down because I've pressed the clutch. And actually if I wasn't braking, the car would again pick up speed. And that's the problem with the coasting, it's this lack of control. You're not in control of how the car is operating and slowing down, or in fact, speeding up. I'll explain a little bit more in a second. So, now what I'm gonna do is press the clutch down and no brake and the car's building up speed. And I have to use the brake a fair bit more to slow it down. So that's why coasting can be a problem. Your car runs away with you. Now, it's not just in first and second gear that this happens. I'm gonna go off up into third gear, but listening for when to declutch or press the clutch down at this idle speed also tells you when you need a lower one. Listen, rev counter, it needs a lower gear, so I'm gonna pick second, and then the car is able then to work in that second gear. So that's another part to it, it's not just being able to press the clutch down and come to a stop, it's also listening for the correct time. 
the car's quite slow, it's idling in second, so I'm going to need to slow, so I'm going to need to go to first gear and then move on. So some people say they're unsure of when to change to a lower gear, and this is usually why, it's usually because they're pressing the clutch far too early without thought, without listening to it, and if you listen to it, you know exactly that it needs a lower gear. Now, the last thing I'd like to try and help everyone with is what to do in their own cars. Now, how I've already explained when to press the clutch is all you really need to know. It doesn't matter whether it's petrol or diesel, you listen to the engine and you press the clutch down just before the car gets to idle or, or when it gets to idle. Different engines, diesels, petrols, they work in slightly different ways. Diesel cars tend not to go quite as slow in the gears as some of the smaller petrol engines. And I hear other instructors telling pupils, you need to press the clutch pedal down two or three car lengths before you come to a stop. What a load of rubbish. It depends the gear that you're in. Um, it depends on a few different things. It depends on uphill or downhill a lot as well, to be honest. So, the only advice I can give you is listen to your engine, let it get down to idle. The higher gear that you're in, the earlier you're gonna to have to press the clutch. For example, if we were in sixth gear in this car, the slowest sixth gear is probably gonna work in this car before you declutch in is 40 miles an hour. Now, what if you're on a national speed limit dual carriageway, doing 70, and a set of traffic lights perhaps change in front of you? What should you do? Simply check your mirror, as you should do, gently brake, until you hear that car get down to idle in that gear, press the clutch and leave it until you get to the red lights. Now I hear some people say, well that's coasting. No it's not. The car has run out of its usefulness in that sixth gear, for example, and you don't need any other gears to actually slow down. When I was taught to drive 20 plus years ago, you were taught to go down through the gears. You were taught fifth to fourth to third and so on. And the reason for that was to take a little bit of pressure off the brakes. But the brakes on modern cars are brilliant just under normal use. We're not talking around a track or anything like that. So literally all we do nowadays is slow down to the speed that we need and then pick the appropriate gear. So that scenario that I've just explained with the traffic lights is not coasting, it's a controlled roll. If the lights were to, to suddenly change, pick the gear that would be suitable to the speed that you're going. And a nice way to think is literally first gear is approximately walking speed, second gear is running speed, and third gear is cycling speed. I hope that helps. What I'm gonna do now is try and show you a few examples of out on the road of when to declutch. I'll switch between the two cameras, but try and pick up on the sound of the engine if possible. So here, I'm turning left at the end. Listening, clutch down. So, I need another gear, usually when the clutch has gone down. It's not always the case. In first and second gear, if the clutch has gone down, you might be able to get away with moving again in that gear. But if you press the clutch pedal down in third, fourth, fifth or sixth, you need a lower one. So, we're just gonna come up to uh, another junction a little bit further up. I haven't got a clue what's gonna happen when we're down there. We may have some more hazards in between where I have to slow it down and use the clutch. Now. If we have a quick look at the rev counter, I've got the car in fourth gear, it's doing 30 miles an hour, and it's not much above idle. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it back in third and give you an idea of what we should be doing to slow down. Turning right, I'm off the gas, the car's starting to slow down, I'm using the brake gently, and I'm gently slowing it down, listening for idle. There it is, clutch quickly down, and I don't need any other gear to come in 
towards the stop at the lights because they're on red. And quite simply, that should be your process. By all means, have a look at your rev counter for a little bit until you get used to the sound. But eventually, you should be doing it with just the sound because that, like I said before, allows you to keep your eyes out on the road. I hope I haven't confused you too much. Coasting very rarely causes major problems on driving tests. It can lead to other things, maybe going into junctions, maybe a little bit too fast, maybe you could swing wide, maybe there could be a car coming the other way, so it can cause potentially serious problems, but in my experience with my pupils, it doesn't cause massive issues. But that may be because I'm teaching them the correct things and the correct time to declutch. I still actually have a fair few problems when I'm teaching driving instructors, getting driving instructors to do the same things because they, they just tend to think that that's um, their comforter, if you like. They press the brake and press the clutch. But pressing it at the correct time gives you information about maybe what further gear or which next gear that you need. So try and put it into practice. If you need me to answer any questions, please comment down below. I'll try and get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching.